Good day to you. Here is the midday broadcast. The word of the Lord came like this. It's a hard time, difficult time. Governments don't know what to do. Uh, media, fake science, fake media are pressurizing governments to go for shutdown, weaken economies, endless random PCR testing. All that is the way it is being planned. In a time like this, this is the instruction of the Lord. Psalm 131. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor my eyes haughty, nor do I involve myself in great matters, or in things too difficult for me. So it's a t time that we must decide to consider the things that are absolutely essential for us. One, our family health. Two, our family finances. Three, our children's education. Four, that we'll be able to always meet on Sunday and we can worship the Lord, keep our faith strong because all the, it's a planned attack on all this. The family, family finances, of course the nation's finances therefore, uh, our education, children's future and also our relationships and our church relationship, relationship with the Lord to be able to worship the Lord in the Lord's house. These are non-negotiables for us. So we want to be concerned for that. And when we have these concerns and we are getting anxious, here, here is the thing, our anxiety comes from pride and being haughty. And by considering things that are too much for us. So let's consider the things that are essential, not get into debates with stick-ups, criticizing governments, we'll immediately get depleted. We need to hear from the Lord. Those days it was enough if we heard from the Lord once a week. Now it is not so. Daily, hourly, we have to hear from the Lord. Yesterday we saw that we are the signal light, traffic light of the Lord. And in that orange zone, we keep hearing for green light to come. And in the red zone, we say, stop by the blood of Jesus Christ. These are our spiritual executive matters that we must take up. Surely I have composed and quieted my soul like a weaned child rests against his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me. This is how we come to repose on the chest of El Shaddai, God of many breasts, enter his comfort, enter his provision, enter his uh, certainty that he will take care of us. And from that vantage point, what do we do? We go to Matthew chapter 10. And the Lord's promise to those who are converted and as little children, uh, that comes from Matthew chapter 11. Here it is, verse 22. Nevertheless, I say to you, uh, verse 23, Verse 25, beg your pardon. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing to you to give the kingdom to such as them. So the, this, those who have quieted themselves in the hearing of the Lord, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ, those who have heard from the Lord and quieted their soul and minding the business they have to mind, your family health, family's finances, your children's education and future, and the Lord's worship house. When we mind those things, there's a wisdom that distills from heaven. And that wisdom will uh, come to those who convert and be as little children. Mark chapter 10. This is where the children theme is coming. How to be a child satisfied, hearing, listening, obeying, not minding high-minded things. Uh, Mark chapter 10, here it comes. Mark chapter 10, 52. Oh. Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. I, I said to them, children, it is easier for a camel to go through uh, the eye of a needle. So he says, those who would be converted and be as a little child, such will be for whom the kingdom of God has power. Be converted and be as a little child. Uh, th that... Uh, 
the, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. Uh, Mark 10:15, 15, uh, Mark 10, 14, permit the children to come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. So the kingdom authority comes to the meek, meek shall rule the earth, and blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That's the attitude that the child weaned on the breast of the Lord. Then we have the promise in Luke 10, for such as uh, those whom he dispatches like that, Luke 10, 18, Behold, to the eyes was watching, Satan fell from heavens like lightning. Behold, I give I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Uh, so that context of Matthew 11, same context in Luke 10, which had the promise that there will be a child brigade that will see the fall of Satan from heavenly places. So we go to uh, Psalm 2 maybe, Psalm 8, beg your pardon, Psalm 8, the promise we have there, promise in Psalm 8. How the Lord uh, manages the battle in these days, the kind of child brigade he's raising up, Psalm 8, that we will take strength that the Lord is able to do this. Men have planned viruses, vaccines, pandemics, infodemics, but God is still on the throne. He will not forget his own. So Psalm 8, the promise is this, from the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful one cease. So they will say, stop by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 8 has a similar theme taken up, but how he will build up his own at a time like this, Isaiah 8. And it gives quite a description of the pandemic also. Here it is, Isaiah chapter 8. Verse uh, Isaiah chapter 8. Bind up the testimonies. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 6. Seal the law among my disciples. So that means bring back to the word. Bring back to the covenant. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders to Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. So there would be uh, 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 children who have con uh, disciples who have converted like little children and they will become signs and wonders. They will execute the power of the Lord. And then others will be consulting mediums. But we say, verse 20, Isaiah 20, to the law and to the testimony. And that's what speaks to us. And it will be a very difficult time. They will pass through the land, hard-pressed, famished, in, uh, and will turn out that when they are hungry, they will be enraged, quite like the COVID time of economic shutdown, and curse their king and their God. Many, many governments feel helpless at this time. God has to come with wisdom for every government. Yes. Uh, then that we did Isaiah 8, then I want to remind you that uh, Revelation chapter 12, the woman clad with the sun, she's the church that is getting ready. She gives birth to a man-child company caught up to the throne of God. Those are the days that we are waiting for. Then Satan falls down and such a company by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb will overcome Satan in their nation. This is the battle, the, the, the travail and the birth pangs, as Revelation 12 shows it, a holy woman clad with the sun, standing on the moon, the preparing church to birth a company who are called the man-child company, Revelation 12, 5, who will ascend to the throne and from there partner with God. God is looking for partners to write his scrolls, end time scrolls for the redemption of nations, transformation of nations, unlikely people getting converted like Saul on the way to Damascus, Saul of Tarsus, uh, people who never uh, considered Christ anymore uh, before this, but they are turning to Christ. This is a time like that. It's assignment time. The Lord is seeking whom he may save in nations. Revelation 13 says, 
the beast is on the show lines of nations whom he may pick up as a head of state, whom in government he can tap, which scientists he can use to uh, drop fake, which media he can capture uh, for the misinformation campaign. It's a terrible time, which only means it's a time we need to hear him hour by hour. Once upon a time we said we will listen to him uh, every week. But now it is hour by hour. In those days we said that prophet said this, this prophet said that. But in these days you better be the prophet for your home father. You better be the prophet young man. Because there is going to be a day of power that is going to be unveiled. Psalm 110. In that day of God is orchestrating the Armageddon. Pharaoh thinks he was pursuing the Israelites to the Red Sea to bring them back into captivity. That was Exodus 1. Now Exodus 2. Pharaoh still thinks, oligarchs still think, the global oligarchs, that they have the whole globe in their hand. All nations and economies in their hands to be used by their taskmasters. That's how they think. But it is a God get up. And who is going to drown? Pharaoh is going to drown. Who is going to victory and to the promised land? God's people. But we need attention, hearing, voice of the Lord, hour by hour. Psalm 110. Psalm 110, verse 3. Your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power, in holy array from the womb of the dawn. Your youth are to you as the dew. So it's a new priesthood, a youthful priesthood, who will take up the Lord's armor. Who is on the Lord's side? Who will go for the king? I am on the Lord's side. I will go for the king. Let it be a time like that young twin has arose. So let young twin has arise again in nations, in the church, uh, to keep the battle she belongs to the Lord, battle shields of the Lord, battle belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor, we will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's a tough battle, but we are hid in the secret of his pavilion. And our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And his armor will clad us. The armor of light, signs and wonders. It's a supernatural intervention. And those who are ready to work supernaturally, the partners of the throne. You remember the prophecy that came to John the Baptist? That's what will happen in this time. Shall we read it also before we finish up? A new generation, new generation, who will be anointed from the mother's womb. From young days, they take up the anointing. Yes, these are the days of anointing. And these are the days of Elijah. Uh, Luke chapter 1, it, verse 17, it is who, who will go a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared to the Lord. We take up that mandate again. So it will be a young people in the forefront also. God bless you. Take heart. Uh, we don't give up. We do not quit. There is a time to engage in the glory of God. May that be your portion. May that be your God. May that be your covering. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all iniquities, heals all your diseases. Who crowns you with loving kindness and redeems your life from ruin and run down. And He fills our mouth with good reports and He renews our youth as the eagle. That's the battle. God bless you.